you guys to make it loud for Chrissy Pedersen! So, uh, I joined the Marine Corps at the ripe age of 17. Woo! I know, some of you are thinking, why, Chrissy? Why the Marine Corps and why 17? Which must mean you haven't heard the old adage, uh, there's no better place to blossom into womanhood. <laughs> than in the world's largest, grossest, most violent fraternity. <laughs> the United States Marine Corps. Ra? Ra. Oh, sorry, for those of you who don't know, Ra is short for Ura, which is short for God knows what, because Marines prefer to speak in grunts and noises rather than form full thoughts and sentences. <laughs> yeah, something like that. You know, even from boot camp, I could tell the script like wasn't written for me, you know? It was like, fight hard, run fast, shoot straight, kill enemies, hate women. <laughs> now seriously though, our cadence when we would run as a unit, the songs, they could be divided in about three categories, okay? We would sing cadence about, you know, uh, your girlfriend's gonna cheat on you while you deploy. <laughs> your girlfriend's gonna cheat on you when you deploy, and probably with an army soldier. <laughs> or your girlfriend, she's ugly. Oh. <laughs> Who cares if she cheats on you? <laughs> no, what's really weird though is that uh, in the Marine Corps they always tell us, even women, that women join the Marine Corps to find a boyfriend, a baby daddy, or a husband, which is kind of weird, because I'm like, there are easier ways. <laughs> it's called the Air Force. <laughs> now, the rough thing is that, like, as women, and, like, before we used to be segregated, the, the boot camps were segre segregated by gender, so this is all amongst women, right? Um, and so we start to internalize it, which is a really weird feeling, because you're in boot camp, and you're, like, simultaneously, like, I am a strong, badass warrior. I'll be right. But I could just have a bunch of babies on the government's dime. I got options. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, it's a little impressive, you know, because only a cult can make you believe both those things at the same time. <laughs> I am quite an anomaly, in case you haven't figured it out, I always have been. Uh, I enlisted as a child soldier uh, from Portland, Oregon, which, you know, yeah, you might know, because we produced uh, the world's most hardened warriors. And now I'm conti continuing this uh, life of an anomaly, serving as a U.S. diplomat in the faraway lands of Tijuana, Mexico. <laughs> being in the being in the State Department, being a diplomat is a lot like being in the military, okay? For a couple of reasons. So, you know, you travel the world in the government's dime. That's nice. You're trauma bonded with all of your coworkers because of all the weird things you end up seeing. Trauma bonded. Yeah. And <laughs> you're trauma bonded, you travel the world, and you're generally misunderstood and respected by society, but not necessarily because they think you're better than other people, but just because they have no idea what you really do. <laughs> so what do diplomats do? I like to explain us like an international DMV. <laughs> We do passports, we do visas, and we have a whole room full of diplomats casually making life-altering decisions based on an obscure set of rules and regulations. <laughs> <laughs> but no, just like the military, you have to pay your dues, you know? I'm a first tour diplomat, this is my very first post. So yeah, I speak three languages, but you know what? 
I can grab the ambassador's bag in any language. <laughs> the only real difference between being a Marine and being a diplomat is drinking on the job. <laughs> As a diplomat, drinking on the job is like a happy hour. Professional development. <laughs> Classy. In the Marine Corps, drinking on the job is embarrassing to the core. Dangerous. And put down that K-bar, Chrissy. <laughs> so I've been married for six years. <laughs> I met my husband in the military, and uh, we did long distance through about three or four deployments. And I was surprised, you know, he waited until, I think, about five years before he asked me to marry him. Yeah, I know. Exactly, right? <laughs> so at first I was like, oh, he's like going against the grain. This is so cool. We're so different than other military couples. They usually get married and sometimes divorce very quickly. We're taking our time. He waited until I got my DD-214, got out of the military, and started school. And then he asked me to be his wife. And I was like... Upon reflection, <laughs> I realized he waited for the first time in my life that I did not have health insurance <laughs> to ask me to be his wife. Couldn't say no to that. <laughs> yeah, there's, I have a lot of stories about being a woman in the Marine Corps and why it was weird. My favorite one that I think conveys the point very clearly. After boot camp, we had Marine combat training, which is the first time we're integrated amongst men and women, okay? So I once had a combat instructor who explained just how long we had to use the restroom by yelling, listen up, Marines, you got a heartbeat and a dick swing. It wasn't until I saw the 60-something dudes from my platoon run to three porter potties and not line up one by one. Do I have any Marines in the audience? Yeah, I know I do. They jammed in as many Marines at one time. And it wasn't until that moment that I realized, apparently a dick swing is not that long. <laughs> <laughs> no, even weirder was when those 60-something dudes got mad at us three women for taking our turn at our singular porter potty. I'm like, mm -hmm. what do you think? This is like a trickle-down economy, like a rack and stack them situation. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is not how this works. I'm like, I know, I know, I know, I know. Young men tend to be ill-informed about where things are located. <laughs> But even I was shocked to learn they didn't know we were ill-equipped for multi-user porta potties. <laughs> but don't worry, I know some of you are concerned in the audience. We had some crayons left over from dessert. <laughs> so I had time to draw a quick diagram for them. <laughs> so I guess what I'm saying to all these marine-loving people in the audience, uh, you're welcome for my service. <laughs>